Well, today on Nation the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking with the number one most requested person to do an interview with, Mr. Steve-O. So if you like Steve-O, if you've heard of him, if you've never heard of him, it doesn't matter. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thanks for hanging out. If it's your first time checking us out, have a look around. Hopefully this video doesn't suck. Hopefully it's better than the cat video and you want to go watch all of them. There's 144 episodes to go and catch up on, which is a ton. Their weekly episodes come out every single Friday. They're live on YouTube and of course, anywhere podcasts are available. So go check it out. Binge away, listen to while you work, all that good stuff. But if you're one of the elite, one of the cool kids, if you're part of the nation and you do all of that, you watch, listen, you thumbs up, and most importantly, you order your supplies through me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this week, I got some name brand sour cream. Thank you for that, by the way. If you have an order to put in, all you need to do is let me know, 862-312-2026. That's my number. It's a cell. Call me, text me, whatever. Put everything in the cart. When you're ready, just text me. Be like, yo, Jersey. I'm ready. Put my cart in. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off with free shipping if you order through me. So again, my number 862-312-2026. Save it in your phone. Well, this is the super spectacular 144th episode because Gross of Rubber is 144. If you didn't know that, by the way, it's a measurement. Oh. And we're here with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Steve-O. Hey, yo. Let me just say, that's amazing that you can do that all in one take. I don't know if people understand. Do you read <laughs> something? Or no, you... I'm, I'm looking at your face right now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's very <laughs> impressive to me. As many yeah. times as I like reintroduce a video and I'm just in my own like van looking at the camera is insane so that's very very impressive you know first off you have to do it that many times i actually have a degree in radio broadcasting also which oh, is that's right. something weird i know but it's one of those things when you read copy it's to continue copy reading regardless so as i say we never have cuts unless i sneeze or cough which i've done i used to like put my hand in front of the camera and that whitewash was what told me that i sneezed and i oh, forgot yeah. one time so it's just me like covering the camera and just sneezing into the mic super loud. And <laughs> pretty awful. I didn't cut it out, but usually it's just all in the take. Yeah. But I don't wow. have to edit, man. You have to, if you haven't seen steve stuff, steve is like the edit king. He's got like videos. Everything is like just, it's, it's perfectly arranged every time with music. Like I don't have to do any of that. I'm very not jealous of all yeah. the work that you put into your videos. Yeah. There is a lot of work and there's been a lot of, uh, learning over the years and uh, a lot of people always ask me like what I use and stuff I just use Adobe Premiere Pro and I mean that thing is almost stupid proof where yeah it's so easy to go in chop the video add music make it go faster make it go slower you can add in all the percentages of uh, what you want things to be and it just like oh it's fun and then there's Photoshop go in there you make some funky fun funky thumbnail and it's kind of fun. That whole part is almost more fun than like sometimes the actual of like filming the videos. Like yeah, yeah. you film videos, you watch it back and you're like, wow, like, this is pretty boring. But then you put a little music to it. You start editing, you start, <laughs> you start blending it all up and See? it comes out and it's like, wow, that's, that's an okay product. Some people might like that. <laughs> you make it, you even uh, edit it so well that it impresses you. But do you yeah. still love it? Do you still like the like process of making the videos? I mean, um, I would say, yeah, I would say, you know, during the winter time, and especially like late fall, winter, early spring, content is, is not really there. When you start getting going again in like the late spring, summer, early fall, things come up like every week. Like yeah. maybe a big job comes up that's like there's something special about that job that is just weird. So that kind of gets you excited and make a video. But during this time, like I put out a video, um, about a squeegee vacuum like what is that like i got i got bored over christmas and i was just got on amazon i was buying gifts and i saw this squeegee vacuum and i was like oh man i'm gonna order this this might be like this might be such good or something like that so yeah. so i bought that made a video about that you know i don't know it's just content definitely gets hard to create especially with yeah. window cleaning you know it's such a 
it's a small world. There's not a lot to go off of, which I'm sure, you know, you find too with this many episodes. Well, we talked about that, like that, that, like people just love to look over your shoulder and like watch you. Like when you nerd out on, on stuff, I have YouTube premiere or whatever it's called, where you just like watch everything and anything and it just auto plays. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, you get down the rabbit hole of stuff that you can like binge content forever. Right. Yep. And that's what like videos are like. I, I think it's really funny because sometimes you'll do something, you'll get done and you'll be like, Oh, that was horrible. That was awful. But it's too late to record something else. I'll put it out and yes. you put it out and everybody's like, Oh my gosh, it was great. Yeah. It's just weird. You can't tell what's great. When you think something's good, nobody cares. When you think something's awful, everybody loves it. Right. Like I had, um, uh, when Aaron and I made a video about the zero pure X2 when I first received it and then we put it together. I never knew kind of like the differences between like a GoPro and a really good camera, right? So I'm thinking these GoPros are just extremely good footage all the time, even though inside things are blurry and things kind of look like crap. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, Aaron films this whole video. He's sitting there editing it. And I come over and I look at the screen. I said, what, what is that? What is going on? Like, that looks so How much better. I said, you can't, you can't make this video. You can't put it out because if you put it out, I can't do any more videos on my channel because this looks so freaking good. And I remember some of the, con he edited the whole video. All I did was talk in it and he put a microphone on me. He's got this camera with a gimbal that's moving all smoothly. And you know, he has all the gear and uh, it was the video I put out and tons of people had, like uh, commented like, finally a professional video <laughs> oh my oh wow like this this is hardcore <laughs> ouch yeah, yeah. it's it, but, but there's there's rendering there's like portability here's the thing what people don't realize is when you're cleaning windows and you have a giant camera on you at all time like people look at you right like yeah i mean you're probably used to it by now but everybody's like is that dude filming himself like nobody yeah, else I'm, gets it i'm a shy i'm actually a pretty shy person i don't think people think that but like I'm pretty shy in that if I have like the camera in my head and I see the customer coming up, I'm like, whip it off, put it in my thing, <laughs> like trying to act like uh, there's nothing there. Or if I turn the camera on inside of a restaurant and there's an employee in there or something like that, and it's even, you know, they're not even open. And like when I hit the power and it beeps, I'll like cough yeah. when it beeps so they don't know the camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm super weirded out about it. But then there's some days where like, I'll just go film whatever. And it's like a lot of fun, but I bought a finally like a DSLR camera and I've been using that for some of the stuff that I've been doing in my office. And nice. you know, it, it really helps in seeing the picture and actually seeing like what is really there and super, super clear. And Those I'm trying to get expensive though. There you can get entry level ones for like six, 700. Yeah. But I mean, it's well worth it. Once you get it, you take photos all like in a month, I, you know, I, I feel oh, yeah. like, you know, yeah, it, it's just been, it's been really good, but you can't do all the cool things with it. You can do with the GoPro. Can't GoPro strap that to your head. <laughs> yeah. GoPro, you could throw 30 feet and lay on the ground and it's still good, you know? Yeah. And, but these cameras, you don't want to get wet. You don't want to getting really dirty like it's just a lot more to it so i don't really take those out to jobs so that makes vlogging a little harder and i would say with vlogging vlogging is probably the most difficult thing like luke was really really good at it you know as far as just being able to especially having someone there like rihanna like when alex was there it was really nice for me to have someone to work off of yeah um, but then when you don't have someone to work off of that gets kind of like it gets kind of boring you're trying to make conversation to yourself like what my other videos I took my dog to work pretty much talking to my dog while filming so that I have some sort of content and it just yeah 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 it's it's interesting did you see that they make a football it's like a nerf football that you put the gopro in so you can throw it to get video oh wow that yeah. was probably for that dude perfect youtube channel probably you that? yeah no. yeah they Born did something ring. with uh maybe some ship or something where they were in like the Bahamas, it was like a shipwreck and they threw it over and you could see the whole ship over with the blue water oh, as it went wow. into the other side. It's wow. Pretty... GoPros are awesome. I mean, you can't, you can't beat them. They, they do so much. They're the easiest camera out there. And yeah. that's what I mainly use. I mean, I use a Hero 7 and a Hero 8 and then the other camera and that's it. And yeah, it I heard really your video well. quality is not real well. 
Yeah, well, thanks. That's a sore subject. (laughs) It's a sore subject. Doesn't feel good. Thanks a lot, Aaron. (laughs) (laughs) No, but here's the problem that I would think is that you'd have a GoPro. I mean, you could step on the thing and you're like, oh, oops. But now you got this big expensive camera. Like, are you, have you caught yourself almost doing something GoPro-ish with it and been like, oh, this is like expensive? No, because I, I overthink and I'm extremely careful with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so when I have that thing up somewhere, I mean, I am not the type to like, I'm like adjusting it just to make sure I let it go a little bit and see if it comes forward or anything and then put it yeah. back. And like, even with my GoPros, I remember when we were at the convention, uh, Mike, the glass guy was there and he had his GoPro. This thing looked like it went through a hurricane, a tornado <laughs> that it had gone through every storm possible and it was still working. And he was like, man, why is my GoPro glitchy? It's like, look at your GoPro. It's damaged (laughs) everywhere. Like the lens is broken, everything. And so I knew- That's right, he had a broken lens. Yeah, Yeah. and he was was still going for it, you know? And he's like, oh man. But the nice thing about GoPros, you can just replace the lens for 10, 15 bucks and twist it. And he didn't know that, right? Like he didn't even know that. that. You told him about that. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, no, but I'm, I'm- I'm very careful with the cameras overall. Check. You know something? Yeah, like staring into my little dot on my my screen here. Yeah, that that is that is my every episode. And that's why I'm so animated. Like when people meet me, you know, when they watch videos, you don't realize it, but it's like, like we're talking about radio. Everything is over animated. And that's because I have to get your attention with right. nothing else there. And it's there's no back and forth. So I like doing these things as much as people always, you know, say, well, I don't know if I like the interview style stuff. It's nice because I can have a conversation as opposed to just trying to talk for 30 minutes, which I have no problem doing. Do you, in front of you, have like your topics that you'll go through? I mean, because usually your episodes are like 30 minutes minutes, or, yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, that requires a lot of topics in order just to talk about sort of so i do bullet points so usually i have four or five bullet points that i touch on so as soon as my brain i try to like do the chess thing where i'm thinking of what i'm going to say way before even when you know you talk but then like if as soon as i feel like i'm getting stale or i'm gonna repeat something i can just look at one of my bullet points and then go and then and then i have another subject kind of to go on but right see that's the nice thing about editing because you can edit out when you sound stupid yeah. So that's the great part. I, <laughs> You're uh, not sounding stupid. No, <laughs> I have 144 episodes where I've sounded stupid. So yeah, no. Uh, eventually you get used to sounding stupid and you realize you don't care. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm in like some battle right now and some guy on uh, Facebook saying how, how we're stupid. And like, it's, it's, it always is that, you know, but I always think it's funny. You have to care about somebody to care about their opinion. Right. So like if my yes. wife was like, Oh, you're stupid. I would be crushed. Uh-huh. which she probably does say that to her friends, but that's <laughs> me. But like some random person online, you're like, okay, cool, man. That's awesome. Thanks for your yeah. opinion. I can't, you can't get them all, you know? And people yep. get so mad when you don't care, but yeah. have you gotten any hate on your channel? Like, has there just been anybody who's just like, Oh you know, yeah. not like you, they want to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, through the years, there's been a lot of hate. Um, it used to be a lot worse. I've toned it down by not answering over the past uh, <laughs> yeah. couple of years. Um, you know, there are a couple heavy hitters that come in every once in a while and really try to go after me, um, and emails, uh, Facebook messenger. Um, yeah, I mean, I won't, I won't say that name because it just starts, if I say it, it starts a war and it's just not yeah. even worth it, but that's all I, they want though, is you to acknowledge them. So if you yes. say it, it just creates more fire. Yes. Like I've had people comment on, a video about how to clean French windows. They, I am a complete idiot and I don't know what the F I'm doing and you need to come to California so I can show what, you know, oh, show I you what that. needs to be done. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's always the contest too of you show a water fed pole technique and someone says uh, traditional is faster. I would get up to my ladder and it's like, dude, that's awesome. Like, and that's the thing anymore. It's like, I don't want to fight with you over window cleaning. I don't want to argue yeah. with you over window cleaning. It's, it's a waste of breath. Uh, you know, yeah. that's the thing. So it's, um, it's 99%, if not more opinion that everybody forgets opinion is different than fact. So people are like, exactly. Oh, this is better. Well, that's better for you. But there is yeah. like, you know, a hundred thousand window cleaners in the country. Like everybody's different. And what I like is not what you like. I always say yeah. that like, I'm, I'm just some dude that happens to have a mic. So anything I say is not right. It's just what's right for me. Well, that episode you did with, um, was it Michael Draper? You see the guy from American Window American, Cleaning Magazine, yep, yep. right? You guys did that episode of, um, oh gosh, 
you're it was it called you're an idiot or um <laughs> yeah yeah yes so i listened to that whole episode and that was like i really liked that episode because it was so true i even tell people when i tell them stuff like take everything you know kind of with a grain of salt i'm not saying that i'm stupid or telling you something that you shouldn't listen to but know where i'm at know where these other people are at ask questions yeah don't just hear something and just use that as what you're going to go for. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing I see in that, you know, these influencers and I, and I'm one of those people, you know, like I, influence ambassador, oh. whatever. And you no, know, I want to say influencer. I'm one of it. You're an influencer. Influencer. So, yeah. but it's like people hate that. Some people hate influencers in society. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. some people completely freaking hate it. And so, but it's window cleaning. So you, it's like, you know, I'm not changing the world. I'm not bringing war to the world. I'm not bringing peace as well, but like it's window cleaning. There's nobody's getting hurt by this. You know, it's, I try to bring education. I try to have a little bit of fun with it, you know? So it's like, we're not harming anybody about what we're talking about. But at the same time, I say that, you know, a lot of the business kind of talk, like I don't do a lot of that because I don't feel a hundred percent comfortable in talking about that because I know that I'm still learning a lot and I still have a long way to learn where someone like you, you have a lot more experience in right. Running a business by yourself. Right. And you eventually sold your business. Right. Or right. Am I kind of right in that? And so you have that whole spectrum that also that I don't have where I took a heavy interest in the tools, the techniques, because I was kind of a worker bee for a long time and didn't really see the other side of it. So now only being like three years in as a co-owner, you know, I just, there's some things I'll talk about with people. There's some things I won't. When people ask me to mentor them, I say no, because, you know, I, I don't feel like the knowledge that I have yet is going to significantly grow your business. Can I help you with an estimate? Sure. But I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with saying I'm going to grow your business from $0 to a million dollars in this amount of time. And, help you with all this stuff. That's just, uh, that's a lot of weight on someone's shoulders and Mm -hmm. I don't have the expertise for it. You know, I'm I'm not afraid to admit that, you know? Well, it's, it's, it's rough with sometimes there's so many people who, and I don't want to say starstruck, but you've helped them with something. So they feel like this immense kind of like love for you, right? Like, Oh, this guy's great. Like he helped me so much. I'm and hearing that is the best thing you that can happen when somebody just, I get, probably daily, probably two, three texts a day. It just says something along the lines like, Hey, I just listened to episode 63. It was amazing, man. This stuff is changing my, that stuff. That's the only reason we do this. Like obviously we're not becoming rich. So that part's great. It's just the other time when somebody's like, I followed everything you said, like everything. Okay. But you have to think a little on your own. No, no, no. I know what you did. You succeeded. You did this. It's great. And it's like, but, (laughs) but, you have to think a little on your own. Like it's, it's hard. And I don't want to say the whole millennial thing. Cause that's kind of a cheap shot. A lot of people, but those are the okay. things you see. Yeah. Those are the things you see though on the forum groups and stuff where somebody come and goes, Hey, I'm uh, new to window cleaning. I'm looking at starting. Tell me uh, what I need to price, what equipment's the best and uh, what my logo should look like. It's right. like, did you look, you, Do something. you can't get handed everything. You can't <laughs> figure this out yourself. <laughs> Yeah. But remember when you got into this, even as a worker bee, it was a while ago. There was no these like these things. So now like everybody's a little bit spoiled and I feel yeah. like unfortunately sometimes and then they get mad. They're like, nobody in that group helps. Right. They asked like 30 questions and they were all jerkishly asked. I hate that too when people jump in and they'll be like, uh, best logo go. And it's like, right. well, that wasn't even a question. Like you're exactly. demanding yeah. answers. Like, I don't even yeah. want to help on that one. Post, post pictures of what your van looks like. Post pictures of your decals. <laughs> and it's like, what? like oh my gosh, man. No, pull, pull, pull like a question. Like if you come in, I got guys that obviously you go in like waves too. So every like few months you have a batch and that batch, some drop off, some add on, but there's this big batch that always goes and they're calling you and talking to you every single day, every other day. And those are the same guys who, if they want to ask me one question, I always say like, if you got a bunch of questions, throw it in the email. I'm happy to answer individual questions on email so you can go back and read it, but don't like text me or call me with 30 of them and then get angry because I didn't answer them quite right. You know? So it's yeah, kind of I, a interesting walk we have to do. Yeah. I would say the question that I almost like, just don't like answering is exactly that. 
what do I do to start a business? Like, what do I do to start a window cleaning business? Wow, that is such a broad question. Dude. And luckily, um, in this ambassadorship I do with Jobber, I actually got to one day, pretty much a lady talked to me for like three hours, and she basically wow. put all my thoughts in an article, extremely well written, well written, and I was like super impressed by it. Yeah, yeah, like, wow, it makes me sound good. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so now I kind of just have that. And I also nice. wrote an article with him. I say I wrote it, she wrote it, uh, where it was just like all the beginner tools. So now anybody asks me that question, it's like, boom, here, here is what I kind of nice. say as far as the stuff yeah. goes. And that's been a nice thing. So you need to uh, write an article, Josh, and yeah. figure out how to do that. And then you just send that out and you don't even I need know. to talk. And it's just simple. I that's know. almost the reason behind, I would say 50% of my videos are literally the most frequently asked questions that I get. Like, and, and some of it, I think as veterans, we forget about the little things that are yeah. hard in your first couple of weeks or your first few months until you kind of get it. And that's most of my videos is as those simple questions. And it, it does great for content because then you know that there's probably, if that person has the balls to ask you, there's probably other people that just don't want to ask you, but they yeah. need it. And I, I think, like a comment I get a lot is how did you know that this is what I was having issues with like this week or this is what I was thinking about yeah. yesterday. I get oh, that all the time. On. Yeah. yeah. I, I read your mind. I don't know. You know, it's just, I'll, I'll do <laughs> like an, the last one I think was my employee one. And I had like six people send me something that said the same thing. We're like, dude, I'm literally hiring people this week. I can't yeah. believe you did the video. It's like, well, I did kind of think, okay, the timing is right. But it's not like random. It's just that many people are going through. I mean, that's just the people who talk to you. Imagine there's hundred of pe hundred people watch your video that have that exact issue at that exact time. that don't even tell you, right? you know, yep. so it, it yep. helps people. That's kind of what we do. And it's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. I'll say, uh, what I've noticed too, in a change on my channel is actually the views difference between just actually sitting here like you do and talking to, the vlogs almost just sitting there and giving your opinion about either a hard topic or just something about it. Actually, I've had more, a lot more interaction with than what I used to have a long time ago. And it's almost like those videos are just being able to sit down, be real and just talk about stuff, do better sometimes. Cause I think watching me clean windows gets pretty freaking old. I would say that. <laughs> well, think about like when you watch like a TV show, like on uh, history or like one of those, like, real shows where it's a camera following somebody doing something. There's one about uh, cho tow truck drivers that I was watching some Canadian yeah. something like it's a camera crew that follows a bunch of guys that go and do tow truck stuff for big accidents and the big rigs. And they're these, you know, semis and stuff. All it is is a camera watching them do something. That's like right. doing the like vlog stuff. It's just a camera in your life. And you're like, yeah. Oh man, like I had to fire somebody today. Here's what happened. Like, right. That. Right. Here is the difference though between YouTube and social media now to like TV. For TV, they take a break, right? Yeah. Like they have seasons. Yeah. On social media though these days, if you do not stay consistent, then you are irrelevant. And yeah. that's the problem with these days until you make it to a certain point. But you and I will never see that point because we're in the window clean industry yeah. on social media. But these bigger people that really make a nice income they can take breaks and stuff like that but literally in these small things that you know categories constant content you have to do it you have to do yeah. it constant to keep to keep there and if, if you just decide that you just want to become irregular and have a weird pattern the way you do things it, it's sad but it's just people have such a you know short what do you call it uh, it's, it's, it's not even, uh, the like short attention span. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, they don't necessarily care that you have a life. They care about what they're enjoying. And if yeah. you ruin something that they're enjoying, and it's not anybody's fault. It's just how it is. Like if somebody becomes irrelevant, think of a band that you liked 10 years ago that you don't listen to anymore because you haven't seen them. They're just right. not relevant. And you're like, right. love them at one time. You know, you, right. you may have a tattoo of a band that you don't even listen to anymore. It's because they became irrelevant. So it's kind of that same concept. Everything has it. Right. It's like Blink-182. Every time they come to town, it's like, holy, holy crap, I forgot they were around. But they've yeah. always been around. I just haven't heard about it in a little while. But I want to go see them. Yeah, yeah. Who's that other guy in the band? I don't know who that is. But yeah. <laughs> Who's that new drummer? What? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's exactly it, though. Like, irrelevancy is like, you have to stay fresh. I always tell people, because 
you know, the whole question of where should I advertise that kind of thing. McDonald's is known by everybody two years older and older in the entire country. If you're poor or you're rich, you eat there yeah. or you don't. They know yeah. it. But yet they still advertise in every magazine, billboard, radio, TV, everything. And the reason is because they still have to stay relevant. They still yeah. have to remind people they exist because if they just stopped everything, people would forget. Right. That's a perfect, yeah, that's a perfect analogy. And, it, and it, that analogy goes into like, too, when I talk to people about like their business and they say, oh, well, I handed out some cards. I said, well, did you talk to anybody? Like, did you actually go in and talk? No. I'm like, well, then that's, that's what you need to kind of do to like, yeah. a lot of people ask me about storefront routes, you know, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And I, from what I've learned, you know, going into the stores, talking to the managers, getting that dialogue and then just following up usually will work. You know, your percentages are kind of small in storefronts of what you're going to get to how many you go into from what I think. But it's like that whole thing of like interacting and dealing with people helps, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this question and put you on the spot. Do you still like cleaning windows? Yes. I still love cleaning windows. I love that was cleaning. A real fast, nice answer right there. Yes. Yes. I, I, have some odd passion for window cleaning. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it's okay. super, super odd, you know, and it, it started a long, long time ago. And I just, I don't understand my fascination with it as far as like, I'll try a tool. I'll buy the same tool two years later, even though I hated it two years ago, just to see if it changed somehow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And I, I always want the new tools. I was always the kid, like in elementary school, you never, you ever seen those like huge pencils, the super like yeah, yeah, yeah. large pencils. <laughs> I would have the most of those in the class just to feel yes. good. Like that was yeah, yeah. like, that was my odd thing. So with window cleaning, there's always new tools coming out and stuff like that. I just always enjoy it. And then um, definitely the difficult windows for, for trad stuff. That's where I really enjoy it. Um, right. You know, water fed pole too has made it so easy. I would say yeah. definitely since really, understanding water fed pole and learning that and seeing how easy it can be, especially these big jobs. You look at it now, you're like, yeah, like it's simple. Like it's, yeah. it's so easy. That has made it really, really fun. Uh, the people I work with, I mean, that really, that really changes. That's it. huge. And That's I, huge. and I love the people I work with every day. You know, I, I wouldn't change that at all. And that's the huge thing because when I was at fish, I, it was a very competitive because of the commission, I was a manager at the time. Everybody wants that manager position as odd as it sounds at fish, but like that was not a fun work environment, but I still loved window cleaning, you know, like I broke my shoulder a year after starting with fish. And like, that was, and I think that's what helped is that I had nothing else to go back to. Like mm. I had to clean windows. Like I couldn't go apply for another job or anything like that. So like for three months, I just cleaned with my left hand wow. and like, after doing that and then getting my right arm back and like the therapy it gave to my shoulder, there's definitely like, um, just a good passion there for it as, as though it kind of like helped my shoulder, kind of helped my life, kind of helped me really grow in life too. And like yeah. everything for the last 10 years has just been window cleaning to things that I never thought were possible. And so I have window cleaning to think. So therefore I love window cleaning. That was good. That was, good. Good that was a really good. We we should have. It sounded <laughs> we like we pressed that, that one. <laughs> no, uh, if anybody doesn't know either, Steve -O broke his shoulder in a uh, wicked motorcycle accident. He was jumping over six wicked. flaming school buses, mm -hmm. and the pyrotechnics on the last one went off. It startled mm -hmm. you. You tipped the bike over. It was it was awful. Yes, but, yes. You, uh, that you can find YouTube. that on. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, evil Castivo. It's, uh, evil uh, Castivo. <laughs> but, uh, oh, are you man. are you like put your headphones in and just vibe and clean windows, or do you talk to people? I know you're an introvert kind of at heart like yeah uh you've seen me be an introvert in person too and like um yeah i have my headphones in but the thing that i've really changed over the past couple years is that now every job i go into i talk to the customer i, oh, I don't nice. i don't care if the job takes longer it's all about talking to the customer and that was a big thing i talked about my channel too over the past couple of years and that was because I was such a worker bee that I thought people were super impressed by me cleaning the windows fast and by like using the two hand method. And I was just a young egotistical yeah. person who just wasn't growing up fast enough. And then once I realized to like slow down, relax, talk to the customers, everything has just gone so much smoother yeah. since then. And like, I enjoy going and seeing the different customers and talking to them. And like, that's most of my day, you know, those yeah. were like, 
those are like my other employees usually. I work alone quite a bit. So, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's nice to be able to do that. That's your Zen though. You're in a flow. Yeah. You know, yep. that's, yep. that's how it is. Like yep. I, here's this weird cheesy thing that I, I, I heard, but your, your life is like a river, right? You're a stream or Creek or whatever. You're, you're flowing. When you flow and nothing obstructs it, that's when water is beautiful. You can listen to it, relax to it. It just looks, but as soon as the sixth stick gets in the way, it changes everything. It changes yeah. the flow. It changes the sound. It changes everything. Once you remove that stick out of your flow, you can flow again and everything's just back to normal. Like that's right. if, as long as you can kind of push that flow out like that, I think the better. Yeah. Yeah. Like for me, actually a big thing for the last eight years, that was uh, what you talk about there is a metaphor of like something that never really allowed me to just kind of like move on was actually hurting my shoulder in jujitsu eight years ago. I just went back a month ago oh, wow. for uh, yeah, so I took eight years off and it was what was really cool is I went back to a school where all the people that I started with who were all white belts are now brown and black belts and started nice. the school. So it's really cool in that, man, my first class like of me going, I was super, super stressed out. I mean, yeah. like, you know, because my, yeah. my arm still doesn't bend certain ways. Like there's yeah. certain things I cannot do with it. And having that hurdle out of the way for me was like an eight year journey. And that really freed up some like, just, it, it just Even made if you didn't life know it was a smooth. problem. It was deep yeah. down inside kind of thing. Now, yeah, yeah. let me ask this question. When you go back, do you still keep your double black belt or does that like you refresh? You actually get one more. It's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Deal. Nice. Yep. You're triple yep. now. Good. Yep. Good. You're, yep. you're going to be that, a... It's just that age. <laughs> it's that eight year longevity. And they're like, Hey, you're back. You're smarter. Here's another one. Yeah. Yeah. You've okay. done a lot in eight years. Even yeah. if it's not jujitsu. <laughs> You've done a lot. You're almost, learned a lot. <laughs> You're almost a Steven Seagal, like, uh, what is he, a five? No, uh, Steven Seagal <laughs> is a joke. <laughs> so, oh, no. Steven Seagal is the guy in videos where it's like he just does this and he touches someone and they fly like 20 feet. Yeah, yeah. They're, they oh, act like they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like stuntmen, you know, in movies. They're the guys that die the most extravagant deaths ever, uh -huh. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun going back nice. to that. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you hanging out. You were the most requested uh, video for me to do. Um, I mean, you know, there you go. You're, you're, yeah, you're something when you're requested on a Facebook poll, right? That feels good. Thank you, people. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate it. If anybody hasn't heard of you because they're living in Iraq or maybe they're new to the industry, tell us like where we can find you on YouTube, what's your channel name, all that good stuff. Uh, Steve L. The Window Cleaner. Steve L. The Window Cleaner on YouTube. Steve L. The Window Cleaner on Instagram. Steve of the Window Cleaner on Facebook and Steve of the Window Cleaner on TikTok. TikTok. Oh, TikTok. You're a TikToker? <laughs> no, I'm not a TikToker, but if that app, you will lose yourself in that app. I do that. not have it. I will not let my kids have it. I'm scared of it. Oh, man. <laughs> just one week and download it and just scroll through it and just, there is oh, a lot no. of stuff you probably don't want to watch on there, but it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of good animal videos. I mean, yeah. I think that is like, the purest the form of social media right now, not pure as in like good pure, right? But like right. nobody's on there for money yet. No, yeah, there's yeah. nobody's making money off of it. So like, there's only a few ads here and there. So it's kind of nice. So nice. TikTok. Oof, I, I I got no <laughs> I, I got no time for more social media. I don't. But I monitor, monitor, and you know, mediate or whatever the stupid admin for a bunch of Facebook or Facebook groups. So I'm on social media more than I would love to be on Face. I don't even yeah. look at like stuff I like anymore. It's just I'm on there too much. So it's good to get a break from it. I have to sometimes just leave the phone at home, go out to dinner with Alex, and just be like, oh, just free myself of this thing. It gets bad. Yeah. 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 Well, here's what we're going to do we're going to give away a gross of rubber, which is 144 rubbers, black diamond. 18-inch uh, rubber. It's awesome, awesome stuff. We're going to give that away. All you need to do is share this video. You need to share the um, audio and subscribe to Steve. -O. That's it. Just share the video. We'll see where you are. Make sure you subscribe, subscribe to all this stuff. And uh, we're going to pick a winner one week from the airing of this. So one week from uh, when this goes live. But if you are still watching and you have supplies that you need, please do order them through me. My number directs 862-312-2026. And this week's code for 5% off is Daredevil. And that's because 
Steve was a daredevil. Yes, he jumped a bunch daredevil. of buses and crashed and then yes, lied about it being jujitsu. Yep, mm-hmm. I got the So <laughs> let me know that. <laughs> Say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Uh, you go ahead, shop all night, put it in your cart. I literally, since we've been recording him, two texts uh, with that exact same thing that I got to take care of. So thank you guys, everybody who uh, lets me put their orders in. Truly, truly appreciate it. It is the reason I get to live. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, but if you haven't, um, go ahead and uh, like this content and make sure to comment on there. Go watch steve stuff. And uh, most importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>